Hey there, welcome to the Raspberry Pi series part of easyprogramming.net. Before I get to the actual tutorial, I want to take a minute and show you and tell you about how you can win one of these Raspberry Pi Zero Ws for free. To generate interest in the whole series, I thought I'd give away some of these for free to my viewers. So to enter, just make a comment in this video anywhere. Uh, it can be a question, you can say, you can just say I want that Raspberry Pi, you can say easyprogramming.net or whatever and you'll get one entry. You can also head over to easyprogramming.net and comment there uh, on the page for this video and you can also just say hey I want this Pi and at the end of two weeks or right before the next Raspberry Pi video, I will post who the winner is and, and ship it out to you. Unfortunately, to minimize shipping costs, I am only going to give these away to people who live in the United States. In the future, I will look at options into international shipping as well. So for now, I do apologize for uh, all of my international viewers. Um, so please do read the entry details in the description below and on easyprogramming.net and comment away. I hope you enjoy the video. Hey there, today I want to quickly show you how to set up a headless Raspberry Pi by installing Raspbian and setting up SSH without ever having to connect your Raspberry Pi to a monitor. If you already know how to install Raspbian, please feel free to skip for the next minute or so of this video and uh, go to the uh, SSH part of this. So if you have not set up Raspbian before, if you like using noobs, you can do that as well. But I like using Raspbian this way. You, know, you, can, you don't need Raspbian Stretch with desktop. You can do Raspbian Stretch Lite, download it, save it somewhere. And the software that I would recommend to burn onto your micro SD card is Etcher. It's free, it's uh, open source, and it works really well. So you know, you select your image, select your device, and then you just flash it, and it takes just a few minutes. Uh, the screen went dark because I had to, uh, you know, allow Etcher to have admin permissions. So uh, I'm going to skip forward the video. Once this is done, you'll see exactly what the boot drives look like. So after Etcher has completed finishing, what you'd want to do is take out the SD card from your computer and plug it right back in. This is to let the computer know that a new drive has been added so that it appears in your uh, explorer. You'll see two more drives, one called boot and one just called USB drive that you can't really access uh, from your current machine. The boot drive is what your Raspberry Pi looks at for configurations when it's being first uh, booted. And this is what we're going to add. We're going to add a new uh, configuration file called WPA underscore supplicant. So I'll just create a new file, do WPA underscore supplicant.conf short for configuration. Change it and we'll edit this. I'll edit this with Notepad. There's nothing here now, and then we'll add a few lines. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste what I have before, zoomed in for your benefit. Um, the most important part here is the network piece, uh, where the SSID is the broadcasted or, or non broadcasted. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi name for you know whatever Wi-Fi connection you're trying to connect to since we're working with the Raspberry Pi W Raspberry Pi Zero W and the next one is the PSK which is short for passkey and this is where you put in your password so I have a a, 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 a Wi-Fi connection called Raspberry Pi and a super secret password which I'll change the scan SSID is uh, a special thing that you can put in if you have an SSID that's not being broadcasted if it's a secret network. Uh, a lot of people do have this set up without having a, a, any kind of password. Not the safest, but you know if it's hidden, people can't find it. There you go. But you can use that scan SSID to, to scan for it and, and find this specific one. And once you have this, you'll just save this. And we're not done yet. We want to enable SSH. So what we want to do is create another file and call it SSH. Nothing. No extensions, no dot in front, nothing. Just call it SSH. It'll be file, uh, just type of file, and that's it. Uh, what this is doing is that it's telling Raspberry Pi that when you boot, enable SSH so that we can connect to it remotely uh, via PuTTY. And once this is done, unplug your SD card, your micro SD card, and plug it into your Raspberry Pi Zero W and turn it on. And I'll show you how to get the IP address so that you can SSH into it right now. So I put in my SD card and plugged it into a power source and turned it on. And one of the ways to tell what IP address your 
SD card has is if you don't want to plug it into a monitor and see what it says in the, uh, the, the boot screen when it's booting, the IP address will be listed at the very bottom after it's done booting, is to open up your clients table of your router and look at whatever new IP address was added. So I have a Linksys uh, range extender that I use for my Raspberry Pi called an Raspberry Pi, which is isolated and just does stuff for my Raspberry Pis. And all these are other Pis, and if I refresh it, it should give me one more, which will be my new Raspberry Pi that I just added. So when I click on refresh, and if you didn't see this, the 196 was added later on. So I'll copy this, I'll open up Putty, plug this in and open. And the first time you connect to Putty, it'll say, you know, the service host key is not cached, blah, blah, blah. You say yes, you log in with Pi, and the default password is Raspberry, log in, and there you go. You're, you've connected to your Raspberry Pi 0W without ever having to connect, connect it to a monitor or to a keyboard just by creating a WPA underscore supplicant configuration file and putting in an SSH key. Um, an SSH file to enable SSH. If you take the SD card out and put it back into your computer, the WPA supplicant file will not be there. And that's because it's a kind of like a one-time use configuration file. It'll use it the first time it boots and then it'll delete it. And rather the Raspberry Pi will save the wireless settings uh, into its own memory. So if you need to change it again later on, just create another, another file and then uh, boot it up again and, and the wireless should change and if you want to change the host name or anything else you can always do you know sudo raspi config and you get this option you can look at the network options blah 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 wi-fi uh, network interface names send it back and you can turn things on here turn on interfacing options here ssh is enabled right so we don't need to do this anymore yeah yeah and there you go how to quickly turn your Raspberry Pi wireless headless without ever having to connect it to a, a monitor or keyboard or mouse. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. Also remember to visit easyprogramming.net. It's working. Have a good one.